Hello makeup lovers, how are you guys doing? Welcome back. I'm super excited for today's video because we're going to be discussing all of the new indie makeup releases from the past week or so. It was one of my big goals for this year for my channel to get back to consistently posting new makeup releases because I know that you guys love this video series from me. Whenever I post it, you're always here, you're always showing up. So I need to do a better job at staying consistent and here we are one week from the last one ready to go again. So. Let's see if we can keep this going. I have a bunch of new releases to talk about today and I feel like there's some things that are just really beautiful, very, very tempting, and then there's other things that I'm kind of just side-eyeing, like what is going on here? I have some opinions, so let's go ahead and jump on in. So let's start off with the reveal of the new Bella Beauté Bar Dead Roses palette. I'm gonna leave it on screen for you. It is beautiful. This is their anti-Valentine's Day palette. And I will say that I imagine this differently. I feel like for being an anti-Valentine's palette, it is actually like a pretty generic, generic, I feel like I said that weird, generic. It's a very generic <laughs> Valentine's Day color story. You've got your pinks, your reds, your purples, but I love the way the color story looks. I feel like there's some really beautiful true red tones happening here. The shimmers look stunning and I love with my whole heart the Bella Beauté Bar shimmer formula. So I am here for it. I also think that it's really awesome that they are launching this on the 26th at the exact same time as their ultraviolet collaboration with Deandra Nicole. I'll just flash a picture on screen just in case you haven't seen it already. I talked about it last week. This is such a beautiful collab, like the most stunning purple palette. I'm super, super excited for it. So they are going to be launching the same day. So if you're interested in both palettes, you don't have to pay for shipping twice, which I know I always appreciate. And I was fully planning to purchase both of these palettes at the same time, but Bella Beauté Bar did send them over in PR and they should be getting here. I think I saw in like two days is what it said. So if I can get a video for y'all up this weekend on these palettes, I will. So stay tuned for that. I will be on it. I'm stalking the tracking. Next we have a new release from M Cosmetics. This is the Barely There setting powder. And honestly, I was really, really into this based on the packaging alone. The packaging is beautiful. Like there's just something about it. It like looks so classy, so elegant, but like fun and chic and I don't know, all the adjectives, I am so into this. But then again, I'm like, it's a powder, Amy. It's just a powder. I wish that this packaging was like something that was like a refill or like that you could put whatever you wanted into it almost because it's so beautiful. I'm like still tempted to purchase it even though I barely wear powder and I actually just purchased a powder to try that has been really hyped and I've seen really, really good reviews from a lot of people about and I feel like that's that's enough for me. Like I just don't reach for powder enough to justify purchasing two powders in a week. Like, come on. There is only one shade available, so I believe that it is a translucent powder and it's just supposed to be like setting and blurring on the skin. I actually prefer my powders to like do something more than that like I like to at least have like some brightening or to have like a little extra coverage just like depending on the mood that I'm in I don't typically reach for powders like just to blur so it's like in my heart I know that this is not for me but it's still it's still hard to resist we also have a new release from say beauty and I feel so silly because I just tried them for the first time and all along I thought that they were Sae Beauty. Like I've heard so many people say that and apparently it's, it's Say Beauty. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I got that wrong, but they came out with some new shades of their like dew blushes. I have not tried them, haven't tried this formula, but you guys know me, you know me like, well, actually this could possibly be your first video ever on my channel. If in that case, you, you have an excuse. You don't have to know the reason I'm obsessed already. I love the shade Baby, like that beautiful, soft baby pink. I am all about a pink blush. I know I'm not wearing pink blush right now, but I was earlier and I pretty much always am. So this shade is just calling to me. I don't really know anything about the formula. It looks like it has like a nice little glow happening. So I don't know, I'm I'm tempted to pick this one up. So let me know, would you like to see it? Like just in a random video, like I don't think that I'll like do a dedicated video. Maybe I could do like a TikTok or something. I also wanted to give you guys an update that I promised. Last week I talked about these Sinful Echoes, Echoes in the Darkness palette and how beautiful it was, 
and how I was sad that I missed it the first time around, but it's going to be available again very soon. And I wanted to let you know that it's actually going to be available tonight. If you're watching this video the day that I uploaded, it's going to be available at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am definitely going to have my alarm set to get my hands on this one. I already talked about it last week. It's beautiful. But I will show you, they have announced that they're coming out with four different like multi-chrome single shadows. One of them is not a multi-chrome. So the red shade here is just a normal shimmer shadow, but they said that the pigments for the shadow are more expensive. So these are all priced at $15 each. And I'm like, they look really beautiful, but I don't think that I'm going to pick them up because I just feel like for $15 a shadow, like I already have so many multi-chromes in my collection that I'm not like necessarily drawn to try these. I think the red is definitely the most stunning of the shadows. Like there's something about just like a true red shade. Mm, but I think that I'm probably going to be just picking up the palette. That's, that's my plan right now for launch, but I wanted to let you guys know the launches tonight. We also have a sneak peek from Clarity Cosmetics. They showed that they're new palette it looks like it says like poison poison rose is what it looks like it says press finger palette it's got you know the anti-valentine's day feel as well so i'm super curious to see how this color story will compare to the dead roses palette from belly beauty bar poisonous rose dead roses you know it's it's the same vibe but i don't know i feel like in my head I'm like wanting like this like super grungy like I don't know I haven't done a BYOP in literally forever so I'm like kind of nervous but like would you guys want to see like an anti-valentine's single shadow build your own palette of like what I am like here for like what I have in my mind because I'm curious to see if Clarity Cosmetics gets like closer to what I'm thinking yeah I'm definitely excited to see the color story I am hesitant to purchase because Clarity Cosmetics is just not my favorite eyeshadow formula personally but they do really cool theming they do really cool unique color stories so I'm always excited to see what they're working on even if it's not necessarily something that I plan on purchasing. We have a new release from Pat McGrath and I saw this and I was just kind of like, like what? Like, I'm not trying to be a hater, I'm really not, but I feel like everyone that I see review Pat McGrath, like reviewers, influencers, customers are all like, we're over the pink. We're over the same color story and everything. And this is the new Valentine's collection and I feel like that's exactly what this eyeshadow palette is. Like, yeah, I get it, it's just a little quad. But does this not look like the same thing over and over and over again? Even the highlighter I was looking at and I was like, I feel like I've seen this like six times over from Pat McGrath. The nude lippies looked really good, really good. But everything else in this collection, I was just kind of like, I don't know, it's too easy of a pass. Like I'm disappointed at how easy it is to pass on this collection. I do really like some of the things Pat McGrath does. Like I appreciate her artistry. I think her formulas are really cool. I would argue there's a lot of smaller brands that have on par quality that like deserve just as much hype, but I'm just not into that release at all. We also have some new Summer Friday lip oils and I did like kind of give this a double take just because I've heard a lot of hype around Summer Fridays and I've heard really good things about their lip products. I actually, when I was in Sephora last, I looked at their like little tubey lip things. I'm not exactly sure what they're called and they were completely sold out and like the entire Summer Fridays display was just destroyed. Apparently it's like a thing, like I posted on TikTok and everyone's like, it's the 10 year olds. I, I don't know what's going on with that, but it was a mess. So anyways, these are the Dream Lip Oil. It says it's a plush lip oil, it glides on them to give you a high shine tint, deep hydration, long lasting softness and shine. It does look really nice. And maybe that like first neutral shade like on like the top left could, you know, weasel its way into my Sephora cart. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, like I kind of want to try this, but like, I'm not like, oh my gosh, need to try this, need to buy this. Like, I don't know. I guess I'm like neutral leaning towards like curious, but I don't know if I'm curious enough to purchase. Ooh, but you know what got me? Well, it didn't get me yet, but there's a high possibility it's going to get me when it makes it to the Sephora website. Laneige came out with a new lip sleeping mask and like, I like, I like their sleeping mask. Like I'm like, 
they're nice. I'll use them. Like I've had like a bunch of different little samples. I've actually finished like several little minis, but this, this is the cotton candy flavor. <laughs> it's so cute. I bet it smells like heaven. Like I just want to buy this and like keep it by my like nightstand, not by my nightstand, on my nightstand. <laughs> Hmm, yeah, that might that might have to be mine. Actually, I guess I should have said we were like switching over to mainstream releases with Laneige, but speaking of, we have a few more things from some mainstream brands I wanted to mention. One is that Skin by Kim is coming out. I guess it's like a new like version, not KKW Beauty, but like a new beauty brand from Kim Kardashian and like, I'm not against it. Like, it's like a lot of nude tones. But when I saw this eyeshadow palette, I was just like, does that not look so similar to the Makeup by Mario nude eyeshadow palette? Like, maybe I'll like make a collage and put them together. Like, I don't know. I don't know that I would like think too much about it if that wasn't her makeup artist. I'm like, it looks so similar, like such a similar vibe. Maybe this is like slightly, slightly more neutral, but it could really depend on like the picture that you're seeing because these are just the promo photos. I'm really curious to hear your guys' opinion on this launch. And the lippies, like there's so many nude shades. It looks nice. There, It's almost to the point where like the lip liners especially, they look a little too similar. Like I feel like maybe like the lip liners could have been less and you could have had a lip liner that goes with like a couple different of the actual lip shades and like made it more simple. But yeah, that's happening. There's also some new L'Oreal nude lipsticks. These are the Color Reach Satins. And I don't know, something about seeing this post made me think about how when I was in high school, I had the L'Oreal like Color Riche J Lo lipstick and it was like the most beautiful, like sheer satiny nude. I loved it so much. I want to say it was like black packaging, but it was like very similar like packaging style to this. And I just thought that these nudes looked really pretty. So maybe not something I would go out of my way to purchase online, but if I saw it in like my local drugstore when I'm like casually in Walmart, maybe I'd pick up one just to try out. And then let's see, I also wanted to talk about Huda Beauty. They came out with two different new color correctors. So there is a pink one, which I believe is called Cherry Blossom and it's based off of their best selling Cherry Blossom um, setting powder. And then they also came out with a peach one, which is called Peach Pie, which they also came out with a setting powder as well. Like those were like kind of launched at the same time. Cherry Blossom is supposed to be for cool skin tones. Peach Pie is supposed to be for warm. And I purchased the pink one. I've tried a few different color correctors recently and I have not been in love with anything I've tried. So I'm hoping that this one will work out for me. And I actually did end up purchasing the Cherry Blossom powder at the same time, just cause I've heard really, really good things about that formula. And yeah, that's the powder that I purchased. And I have not used powder in so long, but I was like, you know what? Let me just try something different. So I got those two together from Sephora and Hopefully the shipping doesn't take a million years. Last but not least, I thought I would mention a launch that I wanted to talk about last week and then I forgot the Twilight ColourPop collection. So this collection is beautiful. There has been so, so much buzz about it. I really like the palette, I do. I think it looks really beautiful. I'm not always like ColourPop's number one fan when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes. I feel like sometimes they're hit and miss. But now after seeing a bunch of reviews on the palette, it looks really good. The swatches look stunning. Like the looks I've seen are beautiful. Like I feel like it's the perfect like grungy, but like still kind of soft, like muted palette. Like the color story is definitely speaking to me. And I feel like if it restocks, I might end up purchasing it. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad I didn't even try because I was like very neutral about it to begin with. I was like, I'm not going to try to get this. And then I heard that the entire launch was like chaos. Like nobody was able to get what they wanted. I'm like, at least I spared myself the headache. Now I've seen some reviews. Now I'm a little bit more interested. And when it comes back out, I'll try. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier this round. All right, y'all, so that is all of the new indie makeup releases and a few mainstream thrown in at the end from the past week. I would love to know what you're picking up, what you're passing on. If there's a release you really want me to review, feel free to leave your feedback down below. Or if there's something I just didn't talk about and you're like, I wanna hear your thoughts, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video very soon, which hopefully will be the Bella Beauté Bar two new palettes. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed for that. I'll see you soon. Bye.